Hisar Foundation and Engro Foundation in association with TV1, News1, Waseb and FM91 presents the 5th Karachi International Water Conference webinar series on climate change and pandemic impact on water. And uh, Asalaamu Alaikum everyone, I'm Zareen Bakir. I'm a Gender and Natural Resource Management Specialist and also a Council Member of Hisar Foundation. I'd like to welcome you all to the 5th Karachi International Water Conference on Climate Change and the Pandemic, the Impact on Water, presented by Hisar Foundation. Today is the last webinar of the series, which is on water and climate change, reimagining women's leadership. This webinar is sponsored by Engro Foundation and Airwaves Media. Without further delay, I'd like to introduce Ms. Sana Baksamusa, who will be giving the welcome address. Sana Baksamusa is a water practitioner with more than 10 years of experience in the water sector. Sana, I'd like to welcome you and invite you to start your presentation. Assalamu alaikum khawateen hazrat mera naam Zareen Bakar hai aur main gender and natural resource management specialist hu. और हिसार फाउंडेशन की मेंबर भी हूं। मैं आप सबको पांचवें कराची बैन अवी वाटर कॉन्फ्रेंस में खुश कहती हूं। आज इस सीरीज का आखिरी प्रोग्राम है जिसका मौजू है आबी माहौलियाती तब्दीली खातन क्यादत की अहमियत इस प्रोग्राम के मावन है एंग्रो फाउंडेशन और एयरवेज मीडिया मजीद देर किए बगैर मैं तारुफ करवाना चाहूंगी सना बक्सा मूसा का जो कि पिछले दस साल से पानी के हवाले से काम सर अंजाम दे रही हैं सना मैं आपको प्रोग्राम में खुश कहूंगी और चाहूंगी कि आप अपनी प्रेजेंटेशन शुरू करें थैंक यू थैंक यू जरीन थैंक यू सो मच सो वेलकम एवरीवन टू द लास्ट एंड फाइनल वेबिनार ऑफ द फिफ्थ कराची इंटरनेशनल वाटर कॉन्फ्रेंस वेबिनार सीरीज ऑन क्लाइमेट चेंज एंड पैंडेमिक सो दिस इज द फिफ्थ कराची इंटरनेशनल वाटर कॉन्फ्रेंस द कराची इंटरनेशनल वाटर कॉन्फ्रेंस इज फर्स्ट बिगैन वी हैड अ फर्स्ट कराची इंटरनेशनल वाटर कॉन्फ्रेंस इन ट्वेंटी Uh, we link the Karachi International Water Conferences with the theme of the UN uh, for of UN Water for that year. So the first one was on water cooperation and action from the global to the grassroots. In 2015, we had our next Karachi International Water Conference because it's a biannual event. The theme for that was security, securing sustainable water for all, integration, inclusion, and innovation. In 2017. we spoke on the future of water in 2019 we had a conference on water energy food nexus agenda for the 21st century and in 2021 with the pandemic upon us we have water uh, water and climate change uh, water and climate change impact uh, uh, water and pandemic impact on water so every conference that we have in the first karachi international water conference which was held in 2013 um there was uh, there was a uh, from the participants that attended there was a call to action to develop a rational uh, a think tank on the rational use of water so the fifth karachi international water conference uh, we because of the pandemic which is which was upon us we decided to convert the fifth karachi international water conference into a series of four webinars instead of an in person conference the theme for this one is climate change and pandemic impact on water the 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 four webinars that we have uh, that we have uh, culminated through this uh, through the webinar series the first one was code red for humanity climate action now the second is circular water economy in urban context the third was thinking the un in unthinkable harnessing the pandemic to improve sdg 6 health and sanitation and the fourth one that we gathered here today water and climate change reimagining women's leadership shukriya ke iwc ke is aakhri webinar mein main aap sabko khush aamdeed kehti hu to ye panchvi ke iwc hai pehli conference 2013 mein hui 2013 mein pehli conference ka inqaad hua jiska unwan tha aalmi aur muqami satah par aabi maawnat par amal daramad 2015 mein pani ki hifazat sab ke liye inzimam shamooliyat aur jiddat 2017 में पानी का मुस्तबिल के अनवान से कॉन्फ्रेंस का इनका किया गया 2019 में कॉन्फ्रेंस का मौजूद था पानी तोनाई खुराक से मुतल 21वीं सदी का लाअमल और 2021 में कॉन्फ्रेंस का मौजू है मालियाती तब्दीली और वबा का फैलाव पानी पर असरात कोविड वबा के बायस हमने फैसला किया कि पांचवें के आई 
हम और वेबिनार की सूरत में करेंगे जो चार कॉन्फ्रेंसेस हमने की हैं इनमें पहली थी कोड रेड बराए इंसानियत फौरी अमल दरामद दूसरी थी आबी मुआशी दायरे कार शहरी सबाक की रोशनी में तीसरी थी नाकबिल तस्वुर का तस्वुर एस डी जी सिक्स सेहत और सफाई को बेहतर बनाने के लिए वबा से हासिल करदा इसबाब का इस्तेमाल और चौथी है पानी और मालियाती तब्दीली खातन की क्यादत की अहमियत अब मैं तारुफ करवाऊंगी आयशा खान का जो कि बात करेंगी पानी और मालियाती तब्दीली में खातन क्यादत की अहमियत के हवाले से आयशा खान का तरक्याती शोबे में 20 साल से जायद का तजुर्बा है और आयशा सी एस सी सी की बानी है Okay thank you thank you so much it's a, uh, really a great honor and a privilege for me to be part of this very important conversation and i want to thank hisar foundation for giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts with a wider audience through their prestigious platform i'm going to start by making a very categoric statement climate covid and conflict are going to be the new normal and a game changer on a planet that is warming up rapidly and a world where the population growth rate is exceeding the capacity of the finite resources that sustain life this imbalance will widen the supply and demand gap pitting vested interest groups against each other triggering demographic shifts and creating new pockets of vulnerability climate change will affect all of us let's be very clear about that no matter where you live or what you do but the bigger challenge that countries will face is the impact of climate change will not be spread evenly across the globe extreme weather events ranging from floods to droughts and wildfires to heat islands will increase vulnerability and exacerbate inequality already we see how climate change is resulting in a higher rate of malnutrition in women and how forced displacement is resulting in increased incidences of violence against women and girls this has a knockout effect in terms of equity of access to education healthcare land capital employment and together these perpetuate and worsen an often just desperate situation for many women in rural communities uh, and i have personal experience of that because that's where i work women are the primary caretakers of households and their responsibilities extend from domestic chores to fetching firewood and water as well as providing a labor on farm other responsibilities include looking after the sick and the elderly and managing multiple relationship dynamics The changing weather patterns and stark imbalances in the hydrological regime are also affecting traditional livelihood activities like farming, fishing and cottage industries. Male out migration is on the rise, leaving unequipped women to perform tasks and respond to situations for which they have no skill set or training. On the other hand, mass displacement of women as a result of climate induced disasters exposes them to risks of exploitation and gender based violence. It is also somewhat ironic that while the conversation about climate has gained global recognition it has yet to find traction in south asian countries women by and large are missing from the climate debate this is partly due to approaches that favor a patriarchal control on societal hierarchy and see men as the power brokers in policy making women are sidelined using subtle and nuanced messaging to prevent them from aspiring beyond traditional roles assigned to them It is therefore not surprising that women without emotional and psychological empowerment even educated women find it difficult to claim their rightful place in society. Religion also retains a strong hold in South Asia and its self-serving interpretation is used by a male dominated society to influence culture and politics to subordinate status of women. 
However, looking at it from a spatial lens and taking into account the wide ranging consequences of climate change, working through male silo approaches will no longer remain a long term option. Growing gender disparities will result in economic losses and social destabilization, forcing inclusion as a critical need in climate adaptation and mitigation. As the climate regime changes, it will need a system reset to tackle associated issues. It will become increasingly important for governments and societies to include women in climate conversations to address socioeconomic vulnerabilities as a preliminary course of policy action. The road to resilience is through women, and to get there, society will need to provide that enabling environment where women have the confidence to dare, the freedom to aspire, and the free will to choose. In the new global order, governments, agencies, and institutions will be under pressure to employ a mix of top-down and bottom-up approaches to fight climate change and pandemics. Women will have to be given their rightful share and access to resources and opportunity. Financial inclusion and meaningful role in decision making will not only be critical for a gender balanced climate future, but necessary for social harmonization and political stability. I will end here now by just saying that in the concept of deep ecology, man and nature interact constantly and modify each other. In order for both to thrive in tandem, it is important that balance is retained between human activity and nature. As women constitute nearly half of humanity, then deductive logic dictates that without the functional and active participation of 50% of the global population, striking balance and living in harmony with nature may remain an elusive goal. So with that, I will end my uh, um, conversation and be open to taking questions. Aisha Khan, thank you very much for Hisar Foundation. Ka. कि मुझे इतने अहम मौजू पे बात करने का मौका दिया मैं इस हवाले से एक बिल्कुल वाजे बयान देना चाहूंगी कि माहौल कोविड और तनाजा ये अब बिल्कुल आम बात बनने वाली है क्योंकि जिस हिसाब से दुनिया की आबादी बढ़ रही है जिंदगी गुजारने के लिए वसाइल की कमी बढ़ती जा रही है माहौलियाती तब्दीली हम सब की जिंदगी पर असर अंदाज होने वाली है चाहे आप कहीं भी रहते हों और कुछ भी करते हों लेकिन यहाँ सबसे बड़ा चैलेंज ये है कि ये पूरी दुनिया को एक तरह मुतासर नहीं करेगा इंतहाई मौसमी तब्दीली जिसमें सैलाब खुश साली जंगल आग सब शामिल है ममालिक की साख्त को कमजोर करेगी और अदम मसावत के फरोह का बायस बनेगी हम देख रहे हैं कि कैसे माहौलियाती तब्दीली के बायस औरतों में गजाइत की कमी वाक़ हो रही है और साथ साथ औरतों पर तशद के वाक़ात में इजाफे का भी बायस बन रही है इस वजह से औरतों को तालीम सेहत मलकियत और मुलाजमत के मौाक़े नहीं मिल रहे देहात में काम देहात में काम करने का मेरा तजुर्बा है और वहाँ औरतें घर की तमाम जिम्मेदारी खुद उठाती हैं जिसमें घर के तमाम काम आग जलाने के लिए लकड़ियाँ जमा करना पानी भर के लाना और खेतों में काम करना शामिल है इसके अलावा घर के बुजुर्गों और बीमारों का ख्याल रखना और तमाम रिश्तों को निभाना भी खातन की जिम्मेदारी में शामिल है माहौलियाती तब्दीली की वजह से रिवायती जरिए माश जैसे कि माहीगिरी खेती बाड़ी और कॉटेज सनत पर भी असर पड़ रहा है इस तब्दीली से औरतों पर तशद का खतरा भी बढ़ रहा है माहौलियाती तब्दीली के हवाले से दुनिया में बहुत बात होने लगी है मगर जनूबी एशियाई ममालिक में अभी भी इस पर काम होना बाकी है औरतों का माहौलियाती तब्दीली के हवाले से बहस में की गई खास किरदार सामने नहीं आ रहा पर एशियाई निज़ाम की वजह से औरतों को आगे आने और मशावरत से रोक दिया जाता है और तमाम पॉलिसियां मर्द ही बनाते हैं पढ़ी लिखी खातन भी माशरे में अपना हक मांगने से कतराती हैं जुनूबी एशिया में मजहबी पाबंदियां भी बहुत ज्यादा हैं जिसको मर्द अपने मुताबिक औरतों पर मुसलत कर देते हैं मुस्तबिल की रोशनी में देखा जाए तो ये मसाइल आगे जाकर मुआशी और माशरती बदहाली का ही बायस बनेंगे जैसे जैसे माहौलियाती तब्दीली बढ़ती जाएगी मसाइल भी बढ़ते जाएंगे ये जरूरी है कि खातन को माहौलियाती तब्दीली के हवाले से पॉलिसी बनाने में हिस्सा दिया जाए और इनसे मुशावरत की जाए लचकदारी का रास्ता खातन के जरिए ही किया जा सकता है और इसके लिए खातन को बेहतर मुआरा फराम करने की जरूरत है जहाँ वो बेखौफ खतर अपने बात कर सकें खातन को मौाक़े देने की अशद जरूरत है आखिर में ये कहना चाहूँगी कि दुनिया की तरक्की 
اس کی نصف آبادی کی رائے ہے اور شمولیت کے بنا ممکن نہیں عورتیں کیونکہ دنیا کی آبادی کا پچاس فیصد حصہ ہیں لہذا ہر شعبے میں خواتین کی شمولیت لازمی ہونی چاہیے اسی طرح ہم ترقی کر سکیں گے یہاں ہم اپنی قیادت یہاں میں اپنی بات ختم کرتی ہوں اور اگر کوئی سوالات ہیں حاضر ہوں you know, highest policy and political levels to acknowledge the role and importance of women in decision making and ensuring the representation of women at the highest policy levels. We'll move on to our next speaker, who we have with us here in the studio, Simi Kamal, who's chairperson of the SAR Foundation. Simi will be talking about uh, changing women's roles in the water sectors, building women's leadership. She's the founder and chairperson of Hisar Foundation, is on the board of the International Water Management Institute. Shukriya, Aisha, you have a lot of knowledge about the government's government. Now, I would like to give you the other guest, Simi Kamal. Simi, Hisar Foundation. Thank you, Zareen. It's so nice to be on an all-ladies panel. <laughs> because we can really talk our hearts out and we can share what we really want to share. Okay, so talking about changing women's role in the water sectors, as my friend Aisha just mentioned, that change is already happening. But the question is that uh, given the capitalist context of how the world works today and all the minimalistic living that we need to move to, are we doing enough or are we changing enough in terms of this role? So when we look at uh, pictures of women in South Asia, these are the kind of images that we see. Okay, here are the women, they are washing hands of children, they are collecting water, they are growing little crops, they are washing bathrooms, they are taking care of toilets. These are the pictures we get when we talk about women in water and sanitation. Well, when we talk about the women environment and water nexus, we say the same thing, women out there collecting water, it is exclusively women's work. They are responsible for growing the food crops and the caring for livestock. This is the survival part, the subsistence part. They are not doing the cash cropping. They are responsible for health and well-being of their children and family and communities. And so, because they do all of this work, the guys have lots of time. And they sit there and they make decisions about women's lives. And they say, well, the women are too busy. So let's take decisions on their behalf. And we know better what they need. Okay? That is the environment in which the water sector is operating today. So let's take a look at Pakistan's national water policy, which came out in 2018. Although women account for just under half of the population of the country, they were referred to only once in our policy. And that too, where women population will be promoted in domestic water supply and water hygiene. Okay? This shows that in spite of Pakistan's agricultural-based economy, an economy that depends heavily, heavily on water and the back-breaking work that women do in water and agriculture. The policy only takes into account women's participation as domestic water users. In fact, recently when I have visited a number of factories, I've seen far more women than men. And uh, when I talk to the factory owners, they say, well, they are more loyal, they come on time, they like to work, they do not unionize, they do not cause problems. And, you know, if you give them pick and drop, they'll do anything for you, okay? So this is the reality of how women are involved in Pakistan's economic sectors and how they, are, they don't show up there. We have seen that where there are women presidents and prime ministers, where countries are led by them, there is more emphasis on environment, water, and natural resources, and also dealing with pandemics. We saw what has happened in which countries did better. Uh, Interestingly, the most commonly held portfolios by women ministers are, you guessed right, environment, natural resources, energy, and then social sectors, social affairs, education, and family. Now, you might say that uh, the reason why these sectors have traditionally had women ministers is because they were never considered important enough or key enough. Environment and natural resources was never that important. But now it is, and the point is that women have experience in handling this. Then at the local level, we have seen that in local government, those councils or committees that have women as chairs or members consistently spend more on water, environment, pollution control, and nature-based solutions. So here, women are already, in a way, they're already leading.
women are actually prepared. They care about things and they are prepared because they have been doing this for centuries. Okay, the day to day back breaking work, which is what we now require to handle the problems and the climate related problems, they have done it for centuries. So now they are prepared to live in a climate changed world. Men are not, women will do so. Women already have the training and the capacity to change the way we, we live. Women have already proven that where they have led countries, the response to COVID-19 has been better. They are capable of this back-breaking day-to-day work. They know how to share what is available. They are already well-trained in establishing and maintaining discipline. They know how to cope with long haul. They have patience, persistence, and networking. Women's collaborative networks are very strong. There are so many women in water, gender in water, and women's rights networks across the world. They are outstanding in terms of the passion and commitment. There is not much money behind them. Most of it is voluntary action. They are mobilized. They can be mobilized to do more in terms of water use hygiene. These networks are mostly voluntary and therefore they are very, very powerful. We say that, you know, women have to act now. Yes, they do. This is part of the leadership they have to show. So they are not recognized as a party to current debates on dams, water infrastructure. They have to be. We have to go and just barge in, which is a, a very dear Indian friend of mine used to do. Her name is Jasmine Jairat, and she would just walk into the manals. And she'd just say, here I am, and she wouldn't go away. And we learned a lot for her. And my friend Kusum was not here at all the major conferences. She would have these big drums, and she would say, I am going to beat the drum until they hear me. And she did. And so we all became drummers with her. Now, these, these are ways that work and that have been effective. So we want to combine the gender equity and equality commitments with water related goals because we believe that can give a solid boost to gender mainstreaming in the water sector. And we have to get authorities to accept women. And the only way we do it is to break the manuals, just walk in and just say, here we are. Okay, try it, <laughs> it works. Now, we want to put women squarely in the middle of water development, conservation, nature-based solution, and managing the planet. Okay, men have to make room for that. We have to ensure they do. Because if we leave it to them, they are going to destroy this planet even faster than we thought. Finally, finally, Hex come to the conclusion that we need a feminist plan for sustainability and social justice. We feminists have known this for last five, you know, five decades or more. So vision for a new feminist social contract that will support the environment and humankind to flourish in our precious planet. Because people are realizing that the capacities, the bend of mind and the proclivities that you need to save the planet and ensure human survival is what women already have. And that is why this feminist plan is so important. I say we that we need transformational leadership now and we need to move from the masculine to the feminine. You all know this yin and yang. If you don't, go look it up. So the masculine style of leadership is aggressive, authoritarian, patriarchal, competitive, conquering, controlling, lesser fair and profits. That's OK. Maybe that's what the world needed up till the last century. But now we need the feminine style of leadership. Cooperation, collaboration, nurturing, planet focused, power of networking, sharing and caring. We don't make, need winner-takes-all kind of philosophies anymore. So can I will we, leave you there with the we, wish okay, that good. many young women will be inspired to take up in the water sector and that many women of all ages will choose to be leaders in the water sector. Thank you. Simi Kamal, Shukriya Zareen. Sirf Khawateen ke panel mein baat karna bohat achcha lag raha hai. क्योंकि आज हम अपने दिल की हर बात आराम से कर सकते हैं तो आप इस शोबे में खातन के किरदार को तब्दील करने के हवाले से मैं बात करूंगी जैसा कि मेरी साथी आयशा ने बताया कि तब्दीली आ चुकी है मगर सवाल यह है कि क्या इस तब्दीली के लिए जिन अवामिल की जरूरत है हम वो पूरे कर रहे हैं और क्या हम पूरी तरह तब्दील हो रहे हैं अगर आप जुनूबी एशिया में खातन की बात करें तो कुछ ऐसी तस्वीर हैं जो हमें देखने को मिलती हैं ये खातन हैं ये बच्चों के हाथ धुला रही हैं पानी भर रही हैं बाथरूम धो रही हैं अपने खेतों का ख्याल रख रही हैं इस तरह तस्वीरें हमें देखने को मिलती हैं जब हम खातन 
اور آبی صفائی کے حوالے سے بات کرتے ہیں اور جب ہم بات کرتے ہیں خواتین اور آبی ماحول کے حوالے سے تو ہم وہی چیز یہاں بھی دیکھتے ہیں کہ پانی اور خواتین کا آپس میں بہت گہرا تعلق ہے خواتین ہی کو گھر چلانے کے لیے روز مرہ زندگی کے کاموں کے لیے کھیتی باڑی کے لیے مال مویشی کے دیکھ بھال کے لیے پانی کی ضرورت ہوتی ہے خواتین اپنے بچوں اور خاندان کی صحت اور نشروما کے لیے ذمہ دار ہوتی ہیں لہذا پانی کے معیار اور اس تک رسائی کا سیدھا اثر صحت پر ہوتا ہے یہاں تصویر میں دیکھیں کہ کچھ مرد بیٹھے خواتین کی زندگی کے حوالے سے فیصلے لے رہے ہیں اور کہہ رہے ہیں کہ خواتین تو پانی پہ بات کرنے میں بہت مصروف ہیں لہذا ہم خود ہی ان کی زندگی کے فیصلے کر لیتے ہیں اس طرح کا ماحول ہے جو آج کل ہم دیکھ رہے ہیں اب کچھ بات کرتے ہیں پاکستان کی قومی آبی پالیسی دو ہزار اٹھارہ کے بارے میں خواتین ہمارے ملک کی آبادی کا نصف حصہ ہیں مگر پھر بھی ان کا ذکر قومی آبی پالیسی میں محض ایک بار آیا ہے اور وہ بھی صرف یہ کہ خواتین کی آبادی کو گھریلو پانی کی فراہمی اور آبی حفظان صحت کے حوالے سے آگے لایا جائے گا اس سے یہ ظاہر ہوتا ہے کہ محض اس کے کہ پاکستان کی زرعی معیشت جو کہ پانی اور خواتین کے کام پر حد سے زیادہ منحصر ہے اس پالیسی میں خواتین کی شمولیت محض پانی کے گھریلو استعمال کی حد تک رہ گئی ہے ابھی کچھ عرصہ پہلے ہی میں بہت سی فیکٹریوں میں گئی جہاں میں نے مردوں کے مقابلے میں خواتین کی بہت بڑی تعداد دیکھی اور جب میں نے فیکٹری مالکان سے اس حوالے سے پوچھا تو انہوں نے بتایا کہ خواتین زیادہ وفادار ہوتی ہیں وقت پر کام پہ آتی ہیں یونین نہیں بناتی مسائل پیدا نہیں کرتی اور اگر آپ ان کے لیے لانے لے جانے کی سہولت مہیا کر دیں تو وہ اور محنت سے کام کرتی ہیں یہ ایک حقیقت ہے کہ کیسے خواتین پاکستان کے معاشی سیکٹر میں شامل کار ہیں پھر ہم دیکھتے ہیں کہ جن ممالک کے سربراہان خواتین ہیں وہاں ماحول پانی اور قدرتی وسائل کے حوالے سے زیادہ بات ہوتی ہے زیادہ تر خواتین منسٹرز ماحول قدرتی وسائل توانائی معاشرے تعلیم اور خاندان کی بات کرتی ہیں اس کے علاوہ لوکل گورنمنٹ کی سطح پر بھی خواتین کونسلرز پانی ماحول آلودگی کی روک تھام اور قدرتی مسائل کے حوالے سے ہی زیادہ بات کرتی ہیں صدیوں سے خواتین کو ماحولیاتی تبدیلی کے مطابق کام کرنے کے لیے تیار کیا گیا ہے عورتوں میں موجودہ حالات کے مطابق زندگی گزارنے کی صلاحیت پہلے ہی سے موجود ہے خواتین نے یہ بات ثابت کر دی ہے جن ممالک میں ان کی حکومت تھی وہاں کووڈ نائنٹین کا مقابلہ بہتر طریقے سے کیا گیا خواتین روز مرہ کاموں کو بہتر طریقے سے انجام دے سکتی ہیں انہیں معلوم ہے کہ چیزوں کو ان کی دستیابی کے حساب سے کیسے بانٹا جائے خواتین منظم طریقے سے کام کرنے کے لیے تیار ہیں انہیں معلوم ہے کہ موجودہ صورتحال سے استقامت اور بہتر نیٹ ورکنگ کے ساتھ کیسے نمٹا جائے دنیا بھر میں خواتین کے پانی اور حقوق کے حوالے سے بہت سے نیٹ ورک موجود ہیں یہ اپنے کام کے حوالے سے بہت مہارت اور جذبہ رکھتے ہیں یہ نیٹ ورک کووڈ نائنٹین کے حوالے سے بھی کام کر رہے ہیں ان نیٹ ورک کو پانی کے استعمال صفائی اور تنظیم کے حوالے سے آگاہی دینے کے لیے بھی استعمال کیا جا سکتا ہے یہ نیٹ ورکس زیادہ تر رضاکارانہ طور پر کام کر رہے ہیں لہذا زیادہ طاقتور ہیں لوگ کہتے ہیں کہ کیا عورتوں کو کوئی اقدامات اٹھانے چاہیے جی بالکل اب وقت آ گیا ہے کہ ایسا کیا جائے خواتین کو موجودہ بحث برائے ڈیم پانی انفراسٹرکچر پانی کی تقسیم آب پاشی زراعت اور پانی کی طلب میں شامل نہیں کیا جاتا اتھارٹیز کو خواتین کو اس گروپ میں شامل کرنا چاہیے جیسا کہ میری انڈین دوست جسمیت جے راج کیا کرتی تھی اور جیسا کہ کلسوم کرتی تھی کہ وہ ڈرم لے کر بیٹھ جاتی تھی اور اس کو پیٹتی رہتی تھی کہ جب تک میری بات نہ سنی جائے میں نہیں رکوں گی اور ہم سب اس کے ساتھ مل کر ڈرم بجاتے تھے تو پاکستان میں صنعتی مساوات اور پانی کو ایک ساتھ جوڑ کر بہتری لائی جا سکتی ہے اور یہ صرف اس وقت ممکن ہے جب ہم رکاوٹوں کو ہٹائیں اور کہیں کہ ہم سب کر سکتے ہیں کوشش تو کی جا سکتی ہے خواتین کو پانی کی ترقی ذخیرہ اندوزی اور قدرتی وسائل سے جڑے مسائل اور ان کے حل کے لیے شامل کرنا چاہیے مردوں کو قواعد بنانے چاہیے اور ہمیں ان قواعد کی پاسداری کرنی چاہیے اس لیے کیونکہ اگر یہ کام ہم نے مردوں پر چھوڑ دیا تو وہ دنیا کو جلد ہی تباہی سے دو چار کر دیں گے آخر میں خواتین کے لیے ایک پائیدار اور منصف معاشرے کے حوالے سے ایک پلان جس سے ہم فیمنس پچھلے پانچ دہائیوں سے کام کر رہے ہیں ایک ایسا نظریہ جس کے تحت ہمارے ماحول اور انسانیت دونوں پر پروان چڑھیں گے کیونکہ اس دنیا کو بچانے کے لیے جن خصوصیات کا ہونا ضروری ہے وہ ہماری خواتین میں پہلے سے موجود ہے اب میں بات کروں گی مردوں اور خواتین کی قیادت کے انداز کی مردوں کی قیادت کا انداز جارحانہ اقتدار پسندانہ مساوتی فاتحانہ اختیاری غیر منصفانہ اور منافع پر مبنی ہوتا ہے اور یہ صدیوں سے چلا آ رہا ہے مگر اب ہم خواتین کے انداز قیادت پر نظر ڈالتے ہیں 
جو کہ تعاون اشتراک پرورش دنیا پر مرکوز اور نیٹ ورک کی طاقت پر مبنی ہے جس میں بانٹنا اور خیال رکھنا شامل ہے میری دلی خواہش ہے کہ بہت سی نوجوان خواتین پانی کے شعبے میں آگے آئیں اور ہمیں خواتین قیادت پانی کے حوالے سے کام کرتی نظر آئیں